<laughs> you can still you can put hints in seven. You can't put hints in Postgres. You can't. Oh, they just they changed yeah, that. Yeah, the got like the hints in Postgres. <laughs> They've finally seen the light. No, they hate it. But that's I know they may hate it. But it means they haven't seen it. Right. Um, I'm Neil Chandler. Um, I'm an independent consultant. Been doing this for far too long. Um, I'm an Oracle based director. Um, as I always like to say, that doesn't mean I'm an expert. What that does mean is that I'd like to come and share my rather a lot of years of experience with you guys. This director just means that I like to attend conferences and do talks. It doesn't make me an expert. Um, who was in my first talk? this week about stats, for some of you. So that was, I just I know, I need to know what little bits I may need to recover. Uh, the optimizer. This is an incredibly washed out screen. Right, okay. Um, is that even short and colour? Well, colour it, yeah. Uh, so the optimizer, what's going on? I use this slide a lot, I've used it in many presentations. So the optimizer takes a past representation of your SQL and it uses statistics to work out a whole different bunch of plans and then it finds the plan with the lowest cost and it executes it to get your data back as fast as possible. And that's the slide that's in the manuals. But I think there should be that tacked on to the end of it because as it's executing, it's also gathering more stats. And this is even more true with Oracle 19 on-premise or on-engineered systems on Exadata, because it's also doing um, some uh, real-time statistics gathering as well. As well as that, especially if you're on 12.1, you may have noticed you've got one or two SQL plan directives also generated to do some additional stats gathering at the point when you're parsing. So, first thing, uh, this is from the, the first talk, to say in the auto stats job. Um, if you're gathering your own stats and you don't want to use the standard Oracle overnight job that runs in the window from generally 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., don't switch that job off because it's doing a lot more than gathering just stats for you. It's also doing dictionary stats, it's also doing fixed table stats, and a whole bunch of other little bits and pieces in that job. So if you're gathering your own stats, don't disable that job, and specifically for Chris Dunscombe, Thank you. Um, you need to set a global preference of all the stats targets with a p-value of Oracle. That stops it gathering for any of your schemas, but still allows it to go and do the Oracle bits in the background. Okay. Right, another that. Extended stats. This is so. This is about a little bit more than the, the, the normal stats we tend to have on it. For those of you on twelve point one, which is most of the room, you may find you've got an awful lot more extended stats than you thought, um, because adaptive stats creates these for you. What are extended stats? Extended stats show you correlation. If we've got a um, standard sales table, customer city, and a a province. We know that cities tend not to move from province to province. They tend to stay in the same one. And therefore our data, city, province, is completely correlated. But if we run uh, this query where customer city is Brighton and the state province is East Sussex, we know Brighton is always in East Sussex. The optimizer doesn't know Brighton is always in East Sussex. There are just two values to it. And so the number of rows the optimizer will estimate for that is 1 over 620, which is the amount of distinct values in the city, and 1 over 145, the amount of provinces. And it comes up with this very small value, multiplies it by the number of rows in the table, and assumes you're going to get one row. If we go and create some extended stats, what Oracle does is go and create a little virtual column and does stats against that for the both of these values. And when we do that, Oracle's being told a little bit more about your data. And if we join those two tables together, we can actually see 
it seems there's only 620 volumes because we know that there is a direct correlation between the city and the province in which that city lives. If we do that query again, the cardinality calculation is 1 over 620, which means that the optimized things you're going to get back 89 rows, which is very different from getting back one row. And the reality is, in this particular table, it'll return 149. That's much, much closer to the real value. You've got a better chance of getting a better plan because the optimizer understands your data a little bit better. And there's a special use case for extended stats. In that, if you have a multi-column index that you're not using and you drop it, you may find your execution plans changed. Because even though you're not necessarily using an index, Oracle is using the stats against the index. And if it's a multi-column index, they've effectively got extended stats on that column group. And so if you drop an index, you may find your plans change. And it can be a good practice to put extended stats on the columns of the index that you're dropping. So your Oracle maintains that level of statistical information about your data. It's a truism that Oracle really goes out of its way to use as much information to get the best plan as possible for you. And even information that you didn't think it was using, it tends to use. Now, you may find this situation familiar. You've got a good plan. Everything's running beautifully. And your stat scan is automatically overnight or whenever you gather them and you end up with a very bad plan. Mm -hmm. Has anyone experienced this situation? You've got lots of nodding heads. <laughs> it's everyone gets this. And what do you normally do? Uh, well, normally you go and you just grab yesterday's plan, stick a baseline on it, everything goes back to yesterday's plan and you run with that baseline forevermore. Um, but I'd like to just give you a little real world example that happened to me very, very recently. Um, it was a, a ticketing system. 11203. Sorry? 11203. It's 11203 database, yes. Very common. You find that almost all of the room is using Oracle 11. Yeah, but they're not 04 though. Right? No. This system it actually happens to be 0204 now, on its way to 19, but I'll come to that. And yesterday, this query was running in 0.01 seconds, today 62 seconds. What happened? If we can look at the TBA tab called statistics, or the column statistics, we see that the status column. It's got 22 million rows in this uh, column, in this table. It's from a sample size of 198,000, and it's got a frequency histogram. And that frequency histogram has got one distinct value on it. So if we go and have a look in the histograms table, we can see that the value is three. And we're looking where the status is in one and two. When you've got a frequency histogram, what it does is it turns out and goes, okay, if the value you're looking for is not in the histogram, it's half the lowest value in the histogram. But we only have one value in the histogram, which is the whole table. So it's looking for uh, one or two so it's two halves of the table, so it's the whole table, so it's going and it's doing the table scan instead of using an index. And if we go and have a look at the table, we can see that it's two million rows and only 4,000 ones and twos. So what happened? Well, in 11, DMS stats performs an adaptive sample to try and get you 5,500 rows of normal data, and it does one adaptive sample. As it happens in this table, another column has a lot of nulls, which means it needs to up the adaptive sample size, and it only does one for the whole table, unlike an you know, old ten where it does one per column, which means it sampled 198,000 rows. But what it didn't do is it didn't see any of the rare values, because the chance of the find spotting a rare value is it's, it only comprises 0.02% of the table, and we're only scanning. 0.9% of the table. So the odds on it spotting one of your rare values is pretty low. Now, frequency type histograms are being fixed in Oracle 12 for this. 
and that it doesn't do adaptive samples for frequency pack histograms anymore. It does a full table scan, which gets you perfect values of the fish. And so what did we look to do about this? Well, as I say, normally you would just go and stick a baseline on the, the plan flip. Unfortunately, in this particular case, the application builds the query dynamically and doesn't use line variables, which meant we had put about 90 baselines on, and also it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have catered for any new queries that came along and would have to catch them as they came along. So baselining wasn't an option in this particular case. But Oracle retains your stats. It retains 31 days of stats by default for you. <coughs> so we went and had a look in the and have stats history. And we can see the stats here were last gathered three months ago. So what are these stats? What do they look like? Why was this working? Well, you can compare stats in the history. And so I went in, and if you do uh, the diff table stats in history, if you're going to start the diff table stats in history, and we put time one is the current stats, so this time stamp, and time two is the one that we want to look at, this time stamp here. And the report that comes out tells me that in the status column, for source A, time one, we've got one distinct value, but for source B, there are two distinct values. And we can see from the min-max that we've got C104, C104, that's the value three, and C102, C104, that's a one and a three. So it actually spotted some of the rare values, the previous time it gathered stats. So the solution for this, and what we did, was we put the stats back in from three months ago. It could see the rare values and it all just worked. And then we locked the table stats so they wouldn't gather again. Because as I said, from Oracle 12 onwards, this isn't a problem for frequency type histograms. And so we need to get this database up to Oracle 19 before the locked stats become a problem and before they become stale, so stale that that causes problems. And as I said in my talk on Monday, there's a thing called a high low value threat due to statistical decay, which is when your stats become increasingly stale, the further away you get from the high value, low value that you have got recorded in your stats, the less likely Oracle thinks it is that you have any data matching your predicates in the table. So the longer you leave table stats locked, the worse that becomes and the more the cost reduces. And if you reduce that for many indexes on one table, how does Oracle know which table to pick? Which index to pick to access your table? It uses other factors, like the clustering factor. And that can be problematic, rather than picking the most selective index. It's a well clustered index. And when you look at the high-low values, and you go and select them from DBA tab columns, you can see that there. Can you read this at the back? No. No? <laughs> so quick zoom. That there. So we can see we've got all of these uh, values which are just really, really difficult to understand because they are effectively an awful internal representation of the data. But we can actually go and decode these ourselves if we want. Um, you need to code them using convert, dbmsstats.convert raw value, and it will convert them. The problem is, it's actually slightly harder than it looks, because where it's a type bar chart 2, it will be returned as a type bar chart 2. Where it's a type number, it gets returned as a number. Where it's a type of float, you get a float back. So it's slightly tricky to actually do this query. But if you do do it, you can see that the low value, high value actually decodes really rather nicely back into something we can read in the readable form. Um, if you're in Oracle 12, you can actually do it with this piece of SQL using um, uh, common table expressions functions built into it. You don't need to read that because you'll look at it in the slides later. Anyway, moving on. I'm going too slowly. Partitions and subpartitions. If you're using partitions, you probably have a lot of data which means you've got a lot of data to read through to get some statistics, which means you're going to burn a lot of resources and a lot of time just to find out your statistics. So how can Oracle help us with this on our partition tables? Well, the first thing you should be looking at is gathering stats incrementally. 
and you should probably be using incremental stats gather if you're using partitions. Because what it does is gathers the stats at a partition level. And so it goes, it gathers some stats, and then it gathers some synopses, and then it aggregates those stats at the partition level up to a global table level. So when you do a query, if your query does partition elimination and it's running against one partition, it will use the stats at a partition level. And if it's using running against more than one partition, it uses the stats at a table level, the global stats. And to switch that on, we can just say for this table, with the uh, table preps, incremental is true. And suddenly it changes how it's doing the stats. It's worth pointing out that if you do a gather auto, that does not apply to incremental stats. And you only get synopses at a partition level to all of the global stats. It doesn't do synopses at sub partitions, it's only a partition level. It's also worth noting it can be slower than doing a full gather. If you're changing a really, well, a relatively high level of your partitions, so it's got to go and regather them, they're not just historical partitions, or if you've got a lot of partitions, and by that I'm talking six figures, 100,000 or more partitions, it can be slower to actually do all of the, uh, do all of the gather, then all of the synopses calculations to get it to roll up the global table stats. You can, it can be better off just doing normal stats gathering, but that's on a case-by-case -case basis. But there are some things to be aware of with incremental stats gathering. Some of the default behaviors are not quite what you think they're going to be. So by default, your stats are marked as stale and due to be regathered automatically when 10% of the data changes. And you can change that stale percent to 5% or 50% or whatever you want it to be. But when you're using incremental partition stats, any DML against the partition, one row change will cause that partition to be marked as stale. And rather beautifully, it tells you in DBA uh, tab statistics that stale, it's not stale. But it is. And hopefully if I've got time at the end, I will prove that to you. <coughs> now, Oracle have realized that this is a problem, so in 12C they've given us a new parameter, incremental staleness, which means instead of saying it's stale when one row has changed, use incremental staleness so it will be stale when 10% by default, or whatever you've got the incremental staleness set to. So it works a little better. And this is a bit of a gotcha. If you lock your stats in partitions, as many people do, and you do any DML against that partition, Oracle basically says the stats in that partition are unreliable. And because they're unreliable, I need to regather them, but I can't regather them because you've locked the partition. So therefore, I'm not going to use incremental stats gathering anymore. And it reverts back to using ordinary stats gathering. So you need to be very careful with partitioning if you lock your partitions, the stats of your partitions. You can override this in 12 though. There's now a new use locked stats option, which means that no matter what the stats are in a locked partition, assume they're valid. So if you lock a partition and switch that on, you can gather stats on your partition, you can then wipe out all of the data in the partition and load an entirely different set of data and it will continue to use the old stats as if they go. Not necessarily a good idea, but at least Oracle and then Oracle Cloud giving us that option. And there are a few other reasons why you might get an unexpected amount of stats gathering for a partition table. So if you do any DDL against any of the columns, and that includes adding virtual columns, and so that includes if you put some extended statistics on your table, it will then regather for every partition. You might find that one of your colleagues has been messing with the partitions. So they may have deleted some column statistics, they may have gone and unlocked some partitions which then now need to be gathered. And one that I came across which was um, You've not only got incremental stats gathering on, but you're gathering it by the command line, and there is a problem. 
And so the deviating gets called out overnight, does a stats gather. But they, because you didn't set it in the table press, they do a stats gather that's non-incremental. And they do a full stats gather against everything. Which means that when your over stats job kicks in, all of the timestamps on your stats do not match the timestamps time stamps on your synopses. And so it goes and regathers everything all over again. And that can be you know, quite, quite hefty when you've got a 170 terabyte table. Or you may find that table column usage has changed. Someone puts some new SQL into your system and it uses a predicate that hasn't been used previously. Now, sys.col usage dollar records the use of all of your predicates, all of the where clauses. And what it may decide is that because you're now querying your data by a new predicate, it needs to build a nice new histogram for you. And if it's got to build a new histogram, it's got to scan through every partition to build that histogram. And you may find that that's a particularly good use when you've got large incremental stats gathering to lock your histograms. Do not allow it to do a method opt a crawl column size auto because you may find suddenly you've got a new histogram because of a new piece of SQL and overnight you get a very, very large stats gather happen that you weren't expecting. It's a pretty good use case for being very specific with what histograms you want on your tables. So this code here, you can uh, see that it's just saying, um, crawl column size one, have no histograms except a size 21 on this column and a size 2001 on these columns. Very, very specific histogram. And controlling it yourself. <coughs> okay, moving on. I've mentioned synopses a few times. And when they came out, I sat in a lot of talks talking about synopses. I don't actually know what they are. So I thought I'd do a bit of investigation to explain them. So I've got a table, my data, it's got three columns that I'm going to show you, ID, a partition column, and a date. And it's nice and simple, we've got three partitions, three rows in each partition. So we've got a table data here, we've got an ID column, one, two, three, ID, number of distinct values, three, yep, that's correct, low value, one, high value, three. Excellent. We've got um, a, a date, number of distinct um, values, two, first of January, second of January, and that's also reflected in the high low. Second partition, three distinct values, four, five, six for the ID, that's correct. Two distinct values, first and second of January again for the date. That works. And the third partition, again, exactly the same, ID, seven, eight, nine, three distinct values, and now we've got the second and third of January for our dates. And so then we've got to take some, some global stats in place for it. Well, for the low value and high value, that's easy. You just find the lowest value in any of the partitions and the highest value in any of the partitions, and we put the, the high and low value in quite easily. But the number of distinct values is a little more difficult. And the number of distinct values is important because it tells Oracle what percentage of the data any predicates go to uh, bring back. And so for the ID, you know, we could do three plus three plus three is nine. There is nine. That's good, it's a primary key, it's unique, it has to be, and Oracle understands that, so it knows it can add up distinct values for unique columns. But for the date column, two plus two plus two is six, but we know, looking at the data, we've only got three distinct values, first, second, and third of January. So you can't just add it up. You can't infer a global value from each of the individual partition values. Now, the way synopses worked in 11.1 to 12.1 varies slightly uh, to how it works in 12.2 onwards. So that's our data set. Hopefully you can just about read it. You're not going to be able to read this, and I'll just do it up again. Um, and we've got this table, Cisco, uh, right on what's that synopsis head dollar, snappy. And it's the header table for the synopses. And all it's doing is describing table, partition, column, and then we've got the object name, that's the table, and the um, group number, that's the partition, and the intercolumn, which is the, the, the um, internal column representation number. And that's what's in the header table. And then it's got a child's table, 
And in that child's table, we've got the synopses. And all the synopses are, are the object number, the partition number, the column number, and then a hash value for every individual unique value in that column. And so we know we've got um, two different dates, 1st and 2nd of January, that's the date column, 1st, 2nd of January. The next uh, column, probably can't say that, but it's exactly the same hash for the first and second, first and second. And for the third column, we also have a hash showing this is also the second of January and the third and hash for the <coughs> third of January, which was unique in the third partition. You see there's no line in there for the ID because it's a unique primary key. If Oracle understands it doesn't need to store that. But if you think about it, if it's storing a hash for every unique value in every column, this table can get quite big. If you're on 11.1 and you're using this, the deletes were horrendous because it wasn't partitioned. But it's fairly quick for it to then scan through adaptively, do what's called adaptive scan through, and identify how many number of distinct values you've got in that by just comparing all the hashes. Does it use that for only range partitions and list partitions? Does it do that for hash partitions? I don't know. I don't see how it's going to do it for hash partitions. Hash partitions are just split yeah, 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 yeah. out. If you look at the synopses in 12.2, or have changed the way they work. Same data set, same header table, and I go to the um, child table, and there's no data in it. And I spent quite a long time trying to work out what on earth had happened to the data and what I was doing wrong with incremental stats. Turns out Oracle don't populate that table anymore when you're doing incremental stats. What they've done is populate, oops, oops, populate some additional columns in the header table. And there's a column here spare too. And, what they've, and that's a long object, it's in a blob. And they've populated a <coughs> very much more compressed version of synopses in there. And they're using the hyperlog log algorithm, which is for the approximate uh, number of distinct values, which is scanned through that. And the real advantage is, synopses could get really big. The biggest one I've personally seen was half a terabyte of sysorcs. I do know one that was three quarters of a terabyte of sysorcs. That's enormous, it's a huge amount of data to scan through to work out what's going on with your stats. That's just stats. The new versions are only about three to five percent of the size of the old ones, which means your three quarters of a terabyte turns into 30 gig. And that's a lot less work for Oracle to plow through all of those. And because it's using hyperlog log, the stats are more accurate to get the number of distinct values. And there's some things to, that you need to know when you're upgrading to 12.2 onwards about what you can do with your synopses. There's this approximate MDV algorithm preference. And it tells Oracle what, what you want to do with your synopses going forward with the new style. If you put on repeat or hyperlog log, which is the default, if you're doing it the old way, it just keeps doing it the old way. If you put a new table in, it will do the new way on the new table. You can tell it to do adaptive sampling, which means just keep doing everything the old way with a huge source. Or you can set it to hyperlog log, which means gather hyperlog log for all of your new partitions that come along but maintain the old style and the old partitions until they get regathered. Um, and you get a mix of formats in the table, and your stats become slightly less accurate as a result if you do this. And if you've got time on your upgrade, you may wish to set incremental still, to still set, the, uh, set these two uh, preps. And then if you do a gather against the partitions, you will gather everything in the new hyperlog log format. And if you've got the time during your upgrade to do that, you probably should be doing that. So lots of do some funny things when they do things like partition exchange. Um, a lot of the reason people use partitions is for loading data into a big table. So you, you create a separate load table, 
you load all of your data into that name, just do a quick partition exchange into your main table. And Oracle put some really quite neat stuff in to make that better for the big table. Um, what you can do now is you create the load table by loading your data in there. <coughs> create the empty partition that you're going to swap with it. Set some table preps on the load table. You set incremental true and you set an incremental level of table which says treat this table as if it is a partition. And that means it's going to gather synopses for it. Then you add the indexes, the extended stats on the load table, the master partition table, and ensure that you gather stats on the load table so you get the same histograms as you have on the main table. And because Cisco call usage dollar isn't populated for your load table properly, probably, what you probably need to do is not do a four column size auto, but be explicit in your method of to say exactly where you need histograms. And if you do that, we get our stats, we do the table exchange, you see nothing is stale. And when we do the table exchange, what we can see is the partition we exchanged got a new date, and the, the six, uh, or six in the morning, and the global <coughs> stats are stale, but none of the partition stats are stale. If we then gather stats against this partition table, the timestamps on the synopses here didn't change. They weren't gathered. The global stats have been updated, and the timestamp for your global stats has been updated. All it's done is going to regather your global stats. And that's a lot faster than having to, if you've already gathered stats on the partition and then swapped it in, you don't want it to go and do that again. That might be a lot of work. But this is a really cool feature in 12.2 Plus. It's also worth knowing what happens to your stats when you're splitting partitions. So if we've got a, a default list partition here, part D, and we split out any values which are part 04 into partition 4 and the default partition, when we split it out, Oracle removes all the stats for both the default partition and it doesn't put any stats in for the new partition we've just created, which means that when you've got the stats, you're going to get stats against both of those. That's just what happens and there's nothing you can do about it, but it's worth knowing what's going to happen. And that's what happens unless you take every value out of the default partition and put it in another partition. Because then what Oracle does is it does what's called a fast split partition. And effectively, it's actually just like a rename and a partition add. And so if we split the partition here, but instead of taking it just the 04, we take it the 05s, which constitutes all of the values in there, into a partition part of 405, and leave the default behind. When you look at the stats, it copies all of the global level stats over, and all of the um, um, partition level stats over. It doesn't remove the old stats from the, part, the, the partition we've just emptied though. It might not be what you want, but it does copy all the stats over. Um, but it doesn't copy the synopses over. So when you do a stats gather again, it's still got to go and regather everything for the, those two partitions. And again, the stats don't show us still, but they are. <coughs> and just a bit less QL that I used to look at that. New partitions. New partitions are empty, with no stats on them whatsoever, and that can be a bit of a problem. So what we've done historically is when you create a partition, it's a good idea to copy the table stats from a, a currently existing partition into your new partition. So you've got something to work with. You can usually pick your largest partition, copy it into the new one, it's got stats before you get data. Because normally you say you create a partition for today and you're putting data into it, but it's, it's empty and the optimizer gets its guesses wrong. And it's usually better to have larger stats than smaller stats. Because by having larger stats, all of them will tend to use hash joins rather than nested loops. And if it gets a hash join wrong, it tends not to be too much of a problem. If it gets a nested loop wrong, that tends to be where your SQL disappears off into itself and never returns. So having large scale stats is generally better than having smaller stats. If you're a partition, you've got to gather your stats. 
and you may need copy stats from another partition, depending on how you're doing the split. But the real problem is when you've got interval partitions, because interval partitions just magically appear, and you can't catch them appearing. You can't put any a DDL trigger on because it happens in synchronously in the background. You just can't catch this stuff. So you can't just catch them. So what Oracle have done to get around that is introduce high frequency automatic optimizer stats, which goes and gathers stats on a very regular basis in the background. Now, if you're on Exadata or you're in the cloud, you can use that functionality, but on your enterprise efficient system in your own data center, you can't. So what you might want to do is pre-create your partitions by either locking a partition that doesn't exist or inserting and then rolling back so the partition will magically appear. But if you do that, it's kind of defeating the point of having interval partitions. So you might want to simulate having a high frequency automatic stats collection yourself. Now, what you want to do is to be running that against your tables to gather stats when they've gone stale. And so you need to gather schema stats with gather auto. We probably don't want to gather it against your entire schema necessarily in the middle of the day. And so the obvious thing to do is to do uh, a gather table stats with options gather auto. Except that that's not what gather auto means on gather table stats. It's got a different meaning for table than it does at schema level. They mean two totally different things. At a table level, it disregards the staleness and can and gather stuff no matter what. The point of gather auto at a table level is to enhance stats from when you've done a bulk data load. So when you do a bulk data load, it will gather some stats as you load your data in. The whole point is, is to enhance that and not to do the gather stale. So you can't use gather table stats with gather auto. It doesn't work. But you might have wanted the full gather schema. So what can you do about that? Well, you can use gather schema stats, but there's a little observed feature in that called filtering. And so what you can do is create a filter array. Um, Score, no, no. Filter array, and then we can say uh, extend to, so make the array two in size, put the two tables in that we're interested in gathering our stats on, and then run a schema stats gather with the object filter list. And that allows us to do a proper gather auto identifying stale stats for just those two tables, which is quite useful. It's quite a neat trick, really. And I have to declare that, uh, that that was come up with by, um, I think, Andrew Holmes worked with Graham Wood in the, um, the Real World Performance Tuning Group. Not my idea, but it's a good idea. So I'll share it. And that's a wee job to do that for you. Okay, five minutes. Um, undocumented options. So where do you even start with undocumented options? I was thinking about this. Uh, well, first of all, you can start by going on the Google because someone's probably done something already similar from something you're trying to find. Or you can go and start tracing the execution of your Oracle executables using S trace and D trace and GDB and these low level tools. <coughs> I'd rather not do that. I'd rather leave that sort of thing to um, Kamil Stajowski and Fritz Hoagland and let them know that that's too much like hard work. Or you could just go and look at the source code. Because this is the source code in, your, in the, the package, but unfortunately that's just documented source code. You're not allowed to look at your documented stuff because Oracle have wrapped it. Now obviously I would never unwrap any Oracle code, but you may find on the internet other people have done that for you, so you don't need to break your license agreements. Um, and if you go look through the DBMS stats code, you just come across this piece of code. And this piece of code here is validating the inputs into DBMS stats. And so when you pull that out, you can see that these are the 24 public, you know, um, uh, documented inputs into DBMS stats. And there are another 17 inputs that they don't tell us about. I'll just tell you about a couple of them. <coughs> 
couple of interesting ones. Enable hybrid histograms, enable top frequency histograms. If you've got top frequency or hybrid histograms that are causing you a problem, you can at a global level switch them off. The default value for that is three, you can set to zero, and you will no longer get hybrid histograms. You'll get high balance instead. That's probably not a good idea, but it might be what you need for your systems. But the one I'm interested in is trace. Trace is particularly useful. Now, the input into trace is a value. So you need to know, well, what values can I put into trace? Normally it's like 1, 2, 8, 12 for Oracle. And so you go looking through the code and you go looking at DBMS stats internal. If you look at DBMS stats internal, they very happily give us a whole bunch of constants that tell us what we can input into trace. That tell us, you know, exactly what we're going to trace. Rather useful. And so if I do a DBMS stats dot set global preps, trace, and I do um, 65532, which is all of these ones added together, get to that number, I'm switching trace on. Two things. One, it's an instance-wide parameter. You don't do this in production. You may find your stats gather produces absolutely enormous trace files. And also, it's an undocumented parameter. You don't put undocumented parameters in production. But you can put them in test systems. And so what can trace prove to me? Well, I can prove that one more leads to staleness. So if we look on here, I've got uh, an interval table. It's got two partitions, 847, 848. 847 has got one update, 848. That's how many rows there are in the partition. So it's got scale. If we look in DBA type statistics, we can see that 847 is not stale, and 848 is stale. So we would expect 847 to not necessarily gather statistics. We switch the trace on, <coughs> on the previous slide, and we go and look at the trace file, we get this line, gather stats on partition 847, stats are stale. One row modification, your stats are stale, unless you switch on the new aspects. A couple of other interesting things. It's telling me that I'm using the HLL algorithm for incremental gathers. I'm using hyperlog log. Useful to know. It's telling me it's the links synopses. It shows you the histograms it's building. It shows a vast amount of information about what's going on with your stats gathers. It's particularly useful if your stats gathering is failing for some reason and you can't work out why. You can identify where it's going wrong. But obviously I can't recommend using it because it's undocumented. I've never said any of that. Uh, and of course, in your table press, income at sale is to use stale percent. That then no longer appears, and it wouldn't have gathered the stats. Okay? So what's in my code? Loads of stuff. Doing stats manually, faking histograms. I know very few people who fake histograms, it's very dangerous. But anyway, pending stats test plans for you unleash them. Lots of stats over the database. Thing. And not stats is a huge subject. This is the third talk that I've, four or five minute talk I've given on stats. And I suspect I'm not finished on this yet. Um, and does anyone know who this is? Marvin. Marvin, Marvin the paranoid android. The, the reason I put Marvin up was as a childhood hero of mine, a very depressed robot. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, in October this year, the, the, the actor who voiced Marvin um, sadly passed away. And so I thought that was, was my last slide. There are other few titles down to the galaxy. Right. One minute for questions. <coughs> Any questions? Silence. No hands. Well, I'm glad you have no questions. Thank you very much.